Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Classy with the Classics. This episode will not feature me drinking any wine, unfortunately, because I'm out of wine at my house, except for a really yucky bottle. So this is going to be a dry episode, so slightly less chaotic than normal. With that being said, let's jump right into it. Another difference between this video and my normal Classy with the Classics video is that today we're only discussing one book. It's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kessie? Casey? I really meant to look up how to pronounce this author's last name because I was like, it's a classic novel. You should probably figure out how to say it. But I didn't because that's not on brand for me. Um, and I really hope that you like watching videos of me mangle literally every last name. <sighs> In any case, to start off with, let's summarize this novel. So the narrator of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest is Chief Brompton. Um, he is a Native American man who's been a patient at this mental institution for about 10 years. He has hallucinations and delusions. Um, his biggest hallucination is involves the combine. And basically he thinks that there's a machine that kind of runs everything in the um, institution and kind of in the world at large. And he has like nightmares of people dying and they're like, uh, instead of like blood, like rust comes out. Um, he's a patient here because also because he is pretending to be deaf and dumb. Um, and never, no one knows that he's pretending. They all think that he's genuinely deaf and dumb. Um, there are the patients at this hospital are kind of split into two groups. There are the acute patients that are ones that are there for hopefully a short time and then will like get better and like, um, be rehabilitated and go back out to normal life. And then there are the chronic patients like the main character, Chief Bromden, who are going to be staying there probably for the rest of their lives. Nurse Ratchet is obviously another main character in this book and her big thing is shaming the patients for the things that they're in the institution for um, basically and like shaming them into submission. The next like catalyst in the novel is when this patient named McMurphy comes into the facility from prison and when he's new there he makes a bet that he can make Nurse Ratchet lose her temper within a week. So the first thing he does to make her mad is he has the patients vote on changing the schedule of like the in like the day room so that they can watch the World Series. Um, and basically Nurse Ratchet rigs the vote and says that um, like all the acute patients vote to watch it, but then there's too many of the chronic patients who are like vegetables basically who are like unable to vote. And so she says they can't watch the World Series because those patients didn't vote on it. Um, so it's not a majority rule. And she ends up getting really upset because McMurphy leads all the patients to, even though the game is not playing on the TV, they all still like go sit down in front of the TV and like act like they're watching the game. So she like freaks out and starts yelling at them and screaming at them. And basically they all look crazy. After this, McMurphy realizes that he is committed to in the institution. So he doesn't have like a day where he gets out, he's at like Nurse Ratchet and like the staff's mercy basically of them deciding that he's well enough to leave. It's not be, um, because he came from prison and thought that he would get to leave like when his prison sentence was up um, and didn't realize that once he got committed to a men mental institution, he had to stay until they said he was well enough to go. So at that point he starts submitting more to Nurse Ratchet and like what she wants him to do but this confuses the other patients because they're used to him standing up for himself more. Um, also at this point though, he organizes a fishing trip. Nurse Ratchet really tries to shoot him down, but he ends up getting like a prostitute or a sex worker that he knew like from the outside and one of the facility doctors to like take him and some of the patients on a fishing trip. And while they're on this fishing trip, they the sex worker that they go with, her name is Candy. Um, and at this point, McMurphy tells one of the other patients, Billy, basically he's going to set um, Billy and Candy up on a date. When they come back from the fishing trip, um, Chief Bromden, the main character, 
and McMurphy end up getting in a fight with one of the orderlies to defend one of the other patients. And so they get sent to the disturbed unit and uh, get are treated with electroshock therapy. Um, they come back to the regular unit and McMurphy is acting like the electroshock therapy like didn't bother him or whatever, but they pretty much decide that he needs to escape. But before he goes, he said that he like promised Billy a date with Candy, so he sneaks Candy and another sex worker into the hospital and they basically throw a rager and Billy sleeps with Candy. Unfortunately, McMurphy also gets too drunk to make his escape that night. So like in the morning, um, like Nurse Rashid and the other staff come there to discover like the uh, unit is trashed and like Billy is in bed with Candy. So Nurse Ratchet is an old friend of Billy's mother and she threatens to that she's going to have to tell his mother what happened and Billy gets so upset over this that he actually kills himself. After that and after that McMurphy um, attacks Nurse Ratchet and like strangle starts to try to strangle her. Um, but the staff like pries him off and he ends up getting taken away and lobotomized. So he comes back to the unit and he's basically a vegetable. Um, and so all the other characters that you've come to know through the novel end up transferring to different units or like moving on to other places or leaving. Um, and Chief Bromden smothers McMurphy um, to kill him and like save him from a life of being a vegetable basically because he's, uh, he's, been, lobot he's been lobotomized. He's not really a, even a person anymore. Um, and then Chief Bromden also like finds the strength within himself to escape the facility. And that's where it ends. <laughs> so just to go over some themes for the book, um, a really big theme is that women are emasculating. Um, obviously Nurse Ratched who shames all the men for um, basically everything, but a big thing that she shames the men for are like the sexual choices that they've made. Um, also, Chief Bromden's mother is another emasculating woman because she married, like, this strong, like, big Indian chief um, and then makes him take her last name. And the novel describes her as, like, reducing him um, to, like, a weak alcoholic. Also, there is some symbolism in the book that the lobotomies they do that scramble the patient's brains are symbolically the same to castrations are basically taking obviously taking away like their manhood another theme would be destruction of natural impulses for example chief bromden has been taken away from like the natural world and living like among his people and like hunting and living a more naturalistic life to living in the facility where everything is controlled and planned out for him and then uh, McMurphy kind of represents more individuality and like freedom of expression. And he ends up being destroyed by the facility that tells him what to do, basically. Another big theme is sexuality. Um, the patients, like how the patients aren't allowed to express themselves sexually in any way. Like there's no relationships like that on the unit, obviously. Um, and then the in the book McMurphy there's like a big um they talk a lot about McMurphy's like sexual path like he's in the facility for raping a nine-year-old girl and at one point in the book he tells Chief Bromden about um se like sex that he had with a girl when he was like 10 years old so that's all I really want to cover on the book I got all of that more or less from spark notes because that's who I am um, I usually am looking at it on my laptop, but my laptop is broken. Also for this video, I watched the classic film, um, obviously adapted from the book with Jack Nicholson. Um, some key, and I wanted to talk about some key differences between the movie and the book. Um, in the movie, McMurphy is kind of like watered down to make him a little bit more of a likable character. In the book, he's a little bit more harsh to the other patients and um, he's like, and he's in for raping like a nine year old girl in the book. He's in the book, in the movie, they made him more like friendly with the other patients. And they also changed the age of the girl to like 15 to make it better somehow. 
Um, also in the movie, he never really submits to Nurse Ratchet, even after he, um, like, realizes that he's committed. He still, like, remains, like, this strong individual. Uh, a really big difference was that Chief Bromden was not the narrator, and that was something as I was reading the book, I was interested to see how the movie would handle it, because for most of the book, uh, Chief Bromden is a very passive narrator because he's deaf and dumb, so it's mostly the book is just his observations, and there's not really a way to film that, I feel like. So in the movie, McMurphy becomes like more the main character and the protagonist, and Chief Bromden kind of is like a side character, more or less. And some other key differences, there is a character, Cheswick, who in the book drowns himself basically out of despair um, from Nurse Ratched's like torment. And the fishing trip wasn't like a sanctioned event. Um, McMurphy like sneaks everybody it's like an escape like they he gets everyone out of the uh, facility and like steals the, the institution bus and like takes them on this fishing trip that being that being said I still felt the movie was good and stayed true to themes from the book it, I felt like it was a pretty close adaptation but there were just like some uh, key differences that I kind of that kind of made sense for when you're transferring a novel to a movie to make it like more palatable and enjoyable to watch like there's just some things that have to change um I do know that apparently Ken Casey never saw the movie because he disagreed so much with the choices made to change his story thank you guys so much for watching I hope this was entertaining and if you've read the book I hope this was helpful to understanding it and if you've not read the book it doesn't really make sense for you to watch this video thanks so thanks so much for watching see you all next time bye